Hata, Uncle Chesaneb, and a Chirak had to rule, Nuke the Tirid had to rule, a Nuke had to rule. I give thanks and praise to my ancestors, teachers, and guides, those in this realm and those on the other side who have assisted in my education. I give thanks and praise to all those who are here to make this world a better place and those who are willing to make the sacrifice to have raised consciousness in our community and on the planet. Uncle Jusanan. Greetings, Brother Dawson. I see that you're here. Peace and blessings. Today we're going to do a topic on Het Haru. Heteru is also known as Hathor in the Greek pantheon. That is the Greek pronunciation. Not so much the Greek pantheon, but the Greek pronunciation. Heteru represents the finishing touches to bring sweetness to civilization. She has the imagination of the arts. She is the imagination. Debs bring forth the arts. The priests would go to Hetheru in connection with the practice of astrology and determining the destiny of an individual. It is said that Hetheru was consulted to map out the life and destiny of every person who was brought to the temple and what they were to be and do in life, as well as when they will be transitioning into the next realm. Now, according to Shechem or Shechem's work, she resides in Sphere 7, and she represents the ability to use the imagination in having an influence on the outcome. That's why if you are dealing with the law of attraction, it talks about how to feel you being in a certain position or having something to get it to manifest. Well, that right there is working with the energies of Hetheru. And she's also close to sphere 9 and 8. And we see how the thought process, as well as the memory, plays a role in the ability to visualize and use the imagination and impress it upon the life force to create situations and outcomes in our lives. So it's important to understand that whenever you do something or say something while you're emotionally charged, you can cause that thing to manifest in your life. So you want to be careful what you say based on how you feel, for one thing. You know, one of the worst things that can happen is when we get into an argument with someone we love and because we're caught up in the heat of the moment, we tell them that we hate them. We've done it to loved ones or have had it done to us and even our parents. Then you grow up feeling a certain way about your parents because of what you said when you were emotionally charged. So you got to be careful. That's why heated arguments are not really good to continue to linger on in a relationship. So with Sphere 7, we can imagine a new type of future as opposed to being stuck in a memory of things that may not have served us. Traumatic events and so forth. Had to rule the faculty that heals this through the arts. And it said that art mimics nature. So when we study history, we come to the awareness that many times when groups would overcome the oppressor, they would take control of the ability to develop arts and crafts. And they would also make it so that there was a movement around developing and awakening the creativity in the individual. One of the things that this education system has done is not only dumb people down, but have taken away their creativity. It is the creativity that sets us free. It is creativity that makes us godlike. The ability to create things. And that's part of the beauty of having this human form. Because you can make discoveries and be creative. So it's very important to keep in mind. For a nation to have arts and culture. It'll work as far as helping someone develop their creative powers. This is especially true when it comes to identity. Colonized and oppressed people have based their views 
on how the oppressor has shaped them. Therefore, they see themselves in a certain way. One of the biggest crimes committed against any group of people is when they are robbed of their culture. And that is because it is true culture and a healthy identification with culture that empowers a group as well as the individual. This includes language, pronunciation, food, and clothing, along with the arts and crafts, as well as certain values, not to mention behavior codes. Like, for instance, in the African-American culture, it's very um, disrespectful to roll your eyes while talking to someone, if you're angry at them, or so forth. Back in the day, that was something, that was a fighting gesture. You roll your eyes at somebody, right? That's specific to our culture. Now, in certain other cultures, it may not be seen as a big deal. One example, if you go to the Middle East, right, they have a different thing, way of uh, viewing disrespect. When I was in Iraq some years ago, I recall that you would never do this when you're talking to somebody. You do this because in their culture, it was considered calling camels. That was considered disrespectful. You see what I mean? But out of being ignorant, a lot of us would go over there and may beckon somebody from Iraq and offend them and not even know it, you see. So it's important to understand everybody's got different expressions of culture and therefore there's kind of a cultural language that everybody may have. So it's good for us to understand our own culture, you see. So let's say you leave this country and you go ahead and do this. Someone takes offense to it. That's because you're belittling them with those motions. That's how they look at it. They, teach, they talk about cultural sensitivity in America, but they don't really teach people all these different moving parts of what a culture is. At least that's just my opinion. Now, going back to Haru, her importance of us establishing group and individual identity is the fact that she deals with the music and the arts, which have the healing powers to elevate the mind. And literally, music can help with one's memory, music can help one's study, Music can help when manifest things, and music can even help the body heal. You know, if you, let's say you um, put rock music in a plant shop, you'll kill all the plants. Classical music and jazz is known to help plants grow and become beautiful. Had to rule his beauty, had to rule his fashion, but she also represents joy. And which one brings into their life, which actually has the healing effect on a person's mind consciously and subconsciously. The temple of Heteru is a place called Dendera, where you'll find the zodiac on the ceiling. Heteru also represents the embodiment of the power of young women. She deals with the art of love making and how a couple can heal one another. That's because the sexual energy is connected to the life force. In fact, sexual energy is not only connected to the life force, it is the life force. So visualization plus the feeling of joy has a direct effect on the subconscious in which the individual will find themselves in a situation which reflect the desire of such outcome. It is through the mind's eye in which we can actually create the outcome based on what we focus on the most. And it is through meditation and going within and paying attention to all the negative thoughts which we can find. When these stories originate and we can change the story that's within our psyche, to have a different outcome because a lot of people find themselves repeating the same events over and over in life because they got the same story running in the back of their mind over and over and over again and it's underneath layers and layers of other thoughts and other forms of programming one of the many reasons why we find ourselves using these visualization techniques failing has a lot to do with the fact that they still have not uh, been changed or charged with positive thoughts or charged with positive energy. Negative stories that are continuing to playing in the back of our mind and in your subconscious works like a computer virus with a whole bunch of other programs on top of it. And it slows down. Eventually the, the computer crashes. And that's what happens to us. So you want to change the story because the stories that you grew up with when you were emotionally charged and traumatized, have been infused with your life force. So Het Haru is also known as the consort of Haru because, you see, she has to motivate Haru. 
okay? Haru needs Het Haru so he can move forward. And we'll talk about that later on. But both Haru and Het Haru are directly connected with dancing and drumming. Within drumming and dancing, we see where the person goes into an ecstatic trance as the drumming and dancing intensifies. And this is where we see the connection with Tantra. That's right. As the drum starts off, then it speeds up. Then it slows down. Boom, you reach that climax. Boom, then the drumming slows down. That's tantric. That's sexual in nature, but not in the bad way. But instinctively, Africans and different indigenous cultures understood a connection with the sexual energy and having to raise and change people's consciousness to invite new energies into their life or to change the situation of an outcome. So this is connected with sexual energy. The slow start, the reaching the climax, after the climax, and reaching the slowing down again. These are all linked to the sexual mysteries that have been practiced in Africa for thousands of years. Heteru represents the pleasure, the desire to move forward, and also the healing energies connected to what would be considered sacred sexuality. So similar practices can be found in ancient and indigenous traditions. These things have been demonized by the West. So this was a brief description. I wasn't going to take too long with this particular video. But one thing that you can do is you can go ahead and you can sit down and visualize the things that you want to see manifest in your life. Feel yourself having these things. Feel yourself being surrounded by these things. Learn how to breathe. Learn how to smile. Put yourself in a situation where you can enjoy your life. Put yourself in a place of pleasure, in a healthy way. Visualize the outcome of the things that you want to see manifest. With that, I like to say peace and blessings to my sisters and brothers. I'll be making more soon. And if you're interested, go to my YouTube channel. Leave some comments. Like and subscribe. It's your boy Kepra Pata. I'm out. Attack.